Today we have good friend of me and Jeremy's. We've known this guy forever. We were stable mates at Kevin Bruni's camp back in the day. We've known each other since since beginning of our amateur careers. We're talking with Hasim the Rock Rockman, former heavyweight champion of the world and one of the only men to knock Lennox Lewis the F out. This is our dude, our homeboy from back in the day. Let's get into it. Welcome to the champ and the chump. <laughs> and who's the chump? You. Me. Welcome to our show, people. What up, Pop? Margo. My man. What up, big old boy? What's up, Jeremy? My yeah, man. Turn it down. What's up with y'all? Man, you reunion. So wait, are you in, you're in Vegas right now? Yeah, I've been here since 03. 03, yeah. good Lord. Wow. Yeah, I've been, I've been crossed over. Why, yeah. why Vegas? Why? I mean, well, taxes, um, weather, is, do I need any more reasons? Yeah, it's freaking 120 degrees in the summer. That yeah, that's, I, I, I normally be on the East Coast in the summer, but like two months. I normally be on the East Coast then, but the other months, I love it. I don't got to deal with no snow. I ain't got to get stuck. I mean, I don't really need to buy boots and winter coats. I'm good. Yeah, that makes sense. That shows how much you've grown up. Your first reason was taxes. Like, okay. <laughs> that's the big. That's the biggest reason. That's the that's the most important yeah. reason. There's no taxes in Vegas. No what? State nah, I'm saying I was paying. You know, the money I'm saving in taxes, you could buy a house. You know. Damn. So why, why would I? Why would I keep? Why would I pay to live in the state? Damn. When I can live in the state for free. Damn. Yeah, but it's fucking hot. Bro. And I'm saying that Jeremy <laughs> got to be the craziest one living in California. That them them state taxes. Outrageous and New York too. Yeah, I got crazy. Y'all paying all that money living in these states. Like y'all could be living in Florida, Texas, Vegas, Delaware. N no state taxes. I mean, I just don't get it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't really pay all the taxes I'm supposed to pay anyway. So, so you know. yeah, but I'm I'm not gonna say that on camera. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen. But guess what? If 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 you if, if y'all stuff jump off and you get highly successful, and you paying a lot of tax, you paying millions of dollars in state taxes, hundreds of thousands of dollars in state taxes, you gonna ask yourself, why am I paying to live here? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I uh, I see that, but I'm I'm on a uh, once my kids are of age and they're going to college, I'm out. I'm gonna, my daughter, she, I don't know, I gotta figure that out. But uh, <laughs> definitely gonna, I'm not gonna stay in California. I'm not nah. by certain Wyoming or some shit. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I could live in a different, like, Wyoming got good taxes too. I know. What do you do in Vegas? Like, like, leave? Wyoming, Alaska, they got, they got real good taxes. So, Yo, but you know, so, I mean, I know I you just, I'm just not. A fan. But you you like the you know heat? No, nah, I mean, actually, Vegas not really an outdoorsy spot. Everything is indoors. Mm -hmm. You know, like the heat is just walking to your car. I mean, <laughs> walking in a building, in a casino, in a place, and everything is air conditioned. That's true. I don't be outside like that. It's it's really not. It's nothing really to do outside in the summertime anyway, unless you go in the gym. If I'm here for the gym purposes. It's just going into the gym and, and getting back in the car. So I can handle that. And I mean, every gym gonna be muggy and hot anyway. So 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 you know that's gonna that's gonna be that. Are, but yeah, um are you are you still in the gym? You still working out? Yeah, I work out every day. But I'm I'm, I'm I mean like I do cardio and weightlifting now. Like um I'm I am i am i am I'm addicted to weightlifting now. You spar anymore or no more? I, I will if somebody say something. <laughs> that's, not, that's not sparring, bro. That's not. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, saw, that's not play around. That's I saw a clip. I was talking to my wife about this. I saw a clip of you sparring your son, and you were going at him because he because he said something. What? <laughs> 
see, I got two kids of my own now. I don't know if I could, I don't know, I'd feel bad. I don't know. Yeah, listen, this is what I always tell my kids, right? I say, look, y'all came out of my balls, and if you ever come out your mouth crazy, y'all can get it. It's that simple. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of basic. Kind of I'm basic. just saying, because listen, right? Listen, the way I look at it is this, right? I always got to humble myself to my father. I, I lived in that man's sack. You know what I'm saying? He's the reason why I'm here. Like, how, how can you... I, I mean, that's the, that's the person of, of all the people in the world you always got to be humble to. Mm -hmm. I and I know, I know I'm... know, i Like, it was an old saying, like, I put you in this world, I take you out. I believe in that. Yeah? I do too, but shit, I, I'm just... I don't follow that rule. My, my son is... is uh. He's a smart ass when he gets uh he gets he gets uh he gets riled up. I ain't going for none of that. Yeah. How I know I also we'll be on the phone we'll be miles away. I'm like, boy, if I you sit man, knock the shit out of you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. When I see you, okay, I'm gonna hold on to that. When I see you, he gonna get three feet real quick. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna have his two feet and he's gonna have my foot in his ass. He gonna wow. have three. How, hey. how, how big is uh junior now? How tall is he? Like what you weight or height? Both. Uh, both. Probably like he, he like six two and a half, like two thirty. So he's like your size, basically. Oh, okay. He did yeah, what? He's like your size. So you were about that, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Like where I was, not not where I am now. What are you at yeah. now? I'm um, um, exactly too much. <laughs> you um, know what I say it. <laughs> Nah, because I'm saying you, you got to realize muscle way more than fat. So mm -hmm. what I am and what I look like I am is two entirely different things. But when you okay. put a weight out there, people just listen to that weight. Dude, I'm two. I'm two fifty five. Woo! You already know that. <laughs> you already know. I'm saying one six. You don't look two fifty five. I know. I, I'm weight. It's heavy. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not I, I don't feel like I'm a big dude. I still look in the camera and see the, the 180 pound dude that used to live there. Living you uh you work out, you work out? I mean I, I work. I work it's it's hard in LA. They're so freaking um stuck on uh COVID and stay away and it's not so yeah, 90 yeah, percent yeah. of the time closed. <clears throat> and uh the most I do is I knock out a couple of push ups and sit ups, you know, a couple hundred a week, but it ain't nothing special. Yeah. I've been doing pull-ups, dips. I've been hitting this weight. I'm I'm trying to hit 500 pounds this year. So, you know, like, I only one I'm going to do that if I stay in that gym. Yeah, well. It's so, just like a little bucket list type thing. What, 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 I know you have a few businesses. What are you doing in these days? Um, I, Right now, I got a real estate company. I'm real estate mortgage. I mean, I got a real estate brokerage in Vegas, portfolio real estate co-owner. Um, that's been around for um, over 20 years in Vegas. Uh, mm. Presently, right now, though, actually, we got closing tomorrow on a, on a house. But what I'm what's been taking up all my time right now is I didn't jump 100 percent in, in into this PPE stuff, the masks, the gloves, the sanitizer. So it's 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 been taking up all my time. I'm making sure. That I, I mean, it's so that's like been the best thing that happened to me in my life. This PPE, this this COVID, um, so that's been really taking up all my life. Getting manufacturing, getting getting masks and gloves to hospitals, getting masks and gloves to different states. Uh, I'm not sure if, if we got something. If we can put, we probably sent a couple hundred million to um California, if I'm not mistaken. I just got checked, but um, yeah, that's that's what I've been doing. This um. Damn. This PPE stuff, so that's been taking up the most of my time, and I also got some fighters. Uh, pro we probably got about like um, I'm a I'm like twenty twenty five percent owner Prince Ranch. Um, we get probably got about 30, 40 fighters. So Damn. you know, um, I've been busy. So like for our viewers, listeners, or whatever, we all met each other in Catskill, right? I said you had just turned amateur, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Yeah, yeah. Jeremy was just turning pro. And um well, I remember that about you though. I said you were always smart. 
real sharp. Um, so it's not, doesn't surprise me that you, that you got a good business mind on, you know, you know, life after boxing. Um, so when you left Catskill, when you left Kevin, who started training you at, at, at that point? I went, um, I went back home to Maryland and I, I got with this guy named James Morton. He actually was, um, was, uh, he had about oh, 20 heavyweights at the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, I just, I just. I just felt like when I was in, in, in Catskill, Kevin really wasn't focused on building fighters to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, when you get a young fighter, Kevin told me, and 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 I really want to really want to really approach him for this, but he told me, um, well, run is not that important. It's all in your mind. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So I, I wasn't really running and really trying, but you have to run. You mm -hmm. have to yeah. get yourself in, in, in the type of shape. That, that that's needed to withstand these punches. And I mean, now, once you're a seasoned veteran, okay, you don't have to run. You know how, you, you be in shape, you be in boxing shape, mm -hmm. and, and you know how to relax, and you, you know it all, you know. But when you got a new amateur kid with no fights, and you tell him he don't have to run, that's just crazy. That's a recipe for disaster. I remember seeing you fight at the time. He was number one in the country uh he went to jail for like a rape or some shit what was yeah joel scott that guy yeah and you came this yeah. close to beating him and that was like your second i had him knocked out at the bell if you remember when the bell when the bell rung uh-huh you know I, yeah yeah I'm going, yeah what, you know, how I you that? remember that Marga? i remember i because i remember coming with you and i remember like yeah yeah you know, yeah we were killing a lot and you weren't there jeremy i think you were you had already turned pro but hasim and everybody was impressed because jeremy was in long beach was he not there wasn't that fight in in in, in um, Rochester. It was. No, it was. In, it was in. It was in um, even Albany or um, yeah. It was, or, in, uh, it was in Rochester. Yeah. You were at that, Jeremy. I was at that. Fight. No, Jeremy. Right. No, you wasn't there, Jeremy. How the f would I know about it? I don't know because it was just talked about. Oh <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like I, you know, I probably would have won that fight if if Jeremy was there. Cause I mean, like, I was getting. I mean, whatever. You what? I just went, huh? What were you gonna say? No, I probably got a little. little I know Jeremy was right familiar with um Joel, and uh -oh. we'd have been boxing. He probably could have been teaching me little things to to help me win that fight. Uh huh. Well, it was. But, uh, you know. Yeah. Joel, he went to jail, prison. Yeah, uh, he went to jail for um. For, 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 he went to jail for, for raping somebody. He came home and then he killed somebody. So he's back in jail. So he just back in jail. Jeez. He's back in jail. I mean, you know, when, when, I, when I see that recidivism like that, I just feel like they like it. You know, they, they, that's where they... And a lot of guys, a lot of guys, that's where they, they are somebody. Like in this, this whole free United States, they nobody. Uh -huh. Nobody, but in the jails, they somebody. They got position. They they got respect in the jail. I mean, if you can have respect in jail, huh? Yeah, for, for somebody that. telling you when you can eat, when you can do do, when you can pee, what yeah, you can eat, what you can watch on television, when you can come outside. Uh -huh. I mean, like, if you can have respect in jail, they they are actually somebody in jail. They mean something. They they not the the, the dope fiends that they are on the street. So. I mean, oh, they, they, most of them work out. So, yeah. So they they got they got um, little, they got they got little status in jail. Yeah, no, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. No matter how much status I got. Question: <laughs> uh, And when, when we were fighting, we you know our pro careers. What fight did you want that you never got? Um. Probably had to say Mike Tyson. Woo! Really? This? Woo. Damn. And how do you think that would have gone? Like, I know you're going to say you would win, but I would say, how do you think that fight would go? How do you see it going? I mean, um, I think, uh, I do think I would win. And I do think that, um, like, I always had a strong jab. And, I, and, 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 and Mike Tyson, that, that's, that's a problem for him. You know, I can't, I can't, like, 
I wouldn't stand there and go toe to toe with him, but I would definitely um try to outbox Mike, you know, and, and keep him on the end of my jab, and uh and then occasionally land right hands. But um, you know, Mike Tyson would be somebody who I think that um that, that's a fight that I wanted that I didn't get. Really, mm. it would be Mike. That's that's uh, that's just what uh. Boom, boom, boom. What was, um, would you what would you what would you do different in the second Linux fight? That's a good one. Well, what I would do, like if if we fought a third time, yeah, sure. I think I would I would I would I would just probably um put a lot of pressure on Linux instead of laying back. See, Linux made adjustments to things that I was doing, and I I really didn't make adjustments. I was so, I was just so like big headed about as soon as I hit him, he gonna go to sleep again. Mm. So I, yeah, a- I was just waiting. Like I, I already knew he was gonna win the earlier rounds, and 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 what what hurt me more was that um I felt like I just knocked him out in South Africa. Then we got into a scuffle on ESPN, and I manhandled him. Like I felt like I was so much stronger than him. So. Let me ask you, that scuffle was not bullshit. It was for real? Like, it popped off for real. It wasn't staged. Marco, you already said you know me, Marco. You already know I ain't going to do no playing around with no grown man. That's a good <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. I'm more asking to get it out there because I remember a lot of people thinking it was like WWF bullshit. And I'm like, I don't think it is. I don't, I don't understand, though. I don't, I don't wrestle with people. I don't do that. <laughs> Like, that's what I'm saying. I, I, that's just not in my make. I'm not getting that close to him. That's what I'm saying. There was no punches. I'm not. I'm not gonna be wrestling. I'm the first of all. Well, first of all, I had a ring on. It was a millions of dollars on the line for a fight. So nobody really tried to break their hand mm. or, or be injured. Mm. So, I mean, I, I just felt like no punches was thrown because. Man, I just think everybody knew it was it was too much on the line to be throwing punches. No, that makes total perfect. Too much on the line. Would you yeah, say I mean, yeah. you break a hand? It's a, it's a wrap. The fight's over. No money. Right. That's what I'm saying. Nobody, nobody. If at all possible, if you get into something with with with, with a lot of money on the line, you you you, you want to make your point without without like mitigating the risk. You don't want to just really just like. Okay, well, we just going to just go street fight. You know, like, I break my hand, he break his hand. Now we might not ever fight. And if we don't ever fight, the money is not going to be there. So, you know, regardless of what happened in the fight, I really don't see a loser in in, in the World Heavyweight Championship fight ever. Mm -hmm. There is no loser. Yeah, people... In that type of fight. People don't understand. Like, that's why I hate... That's one of the reasons why we're doing this podcast, me and him, because... You know, I did it at a low level. Jeremy did it at the really high level. People don't understand unless they've been in there. And you hear a lot of these commentators, a lot of these these hosts or whatever, and they think they know. They think they see shit, but it's so different until you actually do it. You know what I mean? And it takes so yeah, much. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> it, it takes so much balls. It, yeah, like what you're saying is right. Um. Who, who would, you say, who would you say was the hardest puncher like that you felt had the most power you've ever stepped in there with? Um, it's actually two people. Um, it was uh, Lennox Lewis definitely could punch hard. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it was um, South Park and then Corey Sanders. Oh. This joker, man. I mean, I think he hit me so hard because like it was a, a left-handed. It was like he was dropping bombs on me from the wrong side, and it was just, it was just the guy looked like Magnum PI. So <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting anything like that. And, and when when you don't expect, like you expect a big, big guy like Lennox to be able to punch, mm-hmm. you expect guys, certain guys, the way they look, to mm-hmm. be able to punch. But this guy, man, you talk about looks of the ceiling. This guy was man. I, I, I next, I, I was in there with him. Next thing you know, I was getting up off the ground. I so, was, you know, um, I was. Just, it would have to be like those two guys. I was just telling Jeremy about Corey Sanders and that fight with you and him. I think was one is underrated fight because that shit was crazy. 
crazy. Like, Corey Sanders, like you said, man, he knocked out a lot of people. He, even though he looked all like a porn star or whatever, like a 70s porn star. He yeah, he's funny. He can fight, though. But you know what's funny about that fight? Yeah. You know what's funny about that fight? And I'll never get credit for this, right? But um, actually, Corey, Corey Sanders was a WBU world champion at the time. And I took that belt. So I actually won that world title in that fight. Mm -hmm. So I, I was actually a world, world champion when I fought Lennox Lewis. But, but, but the, 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 crazy, the crazy boxing business is when they want to give a title recognition and credibility, they, then they give it to them. When they don't, they won't. Like the WBO, for example, that wasn't really recognized until fairly recently because when Tommy Morrison won that belt, they wasn't really given it. He wasn't really recognized as a world heavyweight champion. You know, um, now they're giving this, this belt, WBO belt, is legitimate. Mm, yeah. So like they, 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 give, they, give, they give world titles credibility when they want to give it to them, you know. So, but in my mind and in my story, the way I write my story, I don't want that title. I, that's a, that was my first world title. So I was a world champion before I fought Lennox Lewis in my story. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's from the WBU? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. 100%. I won the WBU title too. And, and nobody. That's a nobody, world title. So how you gonna take how you gonna take take away for something or not recognize somebody for winning a, a world title? Crazy. That's crazy to me. It, it's it's all dollars and cents, man. Whatever organization puts in the most money, they get the most um they get the most um uh, the, the, recognition. The recognition. I, I saw I saw you say um, that Evander Holyfield was was uh, dirty. Let's just say it, right? Oh, that is notoriously dirty. No, I don't say he's dirty. I, I say he's the smartest <laughs> fighter in the world. Oh, that could be true too. You also because he, he uses his head better than anybody. <laughs> but I feel like people don't know that about him because people like that's not a known unless you're a fighter. That's not a known thing about him. Well, I, well, well, well. Uh, we had a, we had a, we had a um, a session where we was all together, and uh, you asked Mike Tyson, you asked Riddick Bo, Riddick Bo. I got a video. I, I was saying you that the uh, Riddick Bo said, "Man, I see you every day, man, because he because he butted him and cut him in his eye or something like that. A little, he got a little nick on his eye, or whatever. But this ain't it. Ain't just me. Mm. Like guys, somebody like Evander who's really, really experienced and savvy and, and he knows the business so he'll butt you and then throw a combination to confuse the the, 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 the judges and the public so if it's a cut or a bump or whatever mm -hmm. it, he'll make you think that it's um it came from his punches mm -hmm. you know like that's that's crazy Did that's smart that's crazy smart too though yeah, that's why I say he's smart he uses his head very well but it must literally be. figuratively <laughs> every kind of way. But that must be angering too, though, because he's, you know what I mean? Like, like you said, you don't blame Tyson for, you know, I don't blame him either. That must be real fucking aggravating. It yeah. is. It is because it is when you fight fair and somebody, and you think you're in, you're not you're not in the streets, so you feel like yeah. people can't pick up this or pick up that. But if you use your head as a weapon, and you got to realize, you got to realize for somebody like me, right, I ain't walking to the gym till I was 20 years old. All these guys that I, I saw them, like, they was like, you know, I look at them, they, they was the role models for boxing. Like, this was the people that you want to, you want to, like, emulate. This is what you want to be. You want to be a Lennox Lewis. You want to be a, 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 a Riddick Bow. You want to be a Vandy Holyfield. And I don't mean be like them personally, but I mean accomplish winning a heavyweight title. That's what any heavyweight when they get into boxing they want you they want you a uh, a compliment step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I, I get what you're saying. I, I know, so your whole total boxing career was what twenty years? Yeah, twenty years. Wow. I was just wow. I was just talking to Jeremy about when you and him sparred back in Catskill. I don't know if you remember this, and you put your hands down in the ring. During the sparring, yeah. you remember that? Yeah. yeah, I remember. 
I had no clue, man. He doesn't remember. Jeremy doesn't remember that because you were young and you were like you were just started, but you you had a lot. I was just I was just I was just didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Like actually, I shouldn't have been sparring somebody like Jeremy because yeah, like, for one, I hit too hard for Jeremy to really take it easy on me. Uh -huh. Nobody gonna take it if you got somebody who 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 can just naturally punch right. And then you got somebody who, who know how to fight. The, the guy who knows every time. And that's what happened to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I shouldn't have been in there with Jeremy Williams. True, true. I got true, no man. fights. I got no fights. Why am I in there with Jeremy Williams? So you don't. Jeremy Williams fighting. Jeremy Williams had just knocked out an Olympian. So why am I in there with him? So you don't think, you don't believe in the concept. So you, you think that if, if, if somebody could take it easy on you at that stage, it's okay. But you think. You were too green to be in there with somebody who just won't take it easy. I I don't I don't want nobody to take it easy, man. I just want to be in there with somebody like on my level, so we can go and push each other. Iron shop is iron, right? Mm -hmm. Me me getting in there with somebody who I can't even hit. You know what I'm saying? Jeremy Jeremy got defense. Jeremy got offense. Jeremy hit speed. Jeremy hit power. Jeremy hit everything. Mm -hmm. What am I doing in there with him? I, I don't I even I, I don't even know how to fight. Mm. And then, not only that, but the way I was really taught how to fight, I was told not to do any of that. Move my head, move my head. It was the custom model training. Now, instead of me trying to catch a jab or roll with a punch, it's all, now I'm trying to learn something new. Mm. At the same time, I'm in there with a killer. That's well, crazy. I, I think, I agree. And I, I, we've said this before, that style doesn't really work well for tall people. Like even me, I'm, I'm 5'11", 165. I'm a little tall for my weight. You obviously are huge for your weight. So I think that style is, it works way better for short explosive fighters. But also even with me, Jeremy will put me in there and he used to do no headgear. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, not Jeremy, uh, Kevin will put us in and he would do no headgear. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, and at the time, you know, it's an ego thing. He's, you know, he's like, you can wear headgear. It's for pussies, but go ahead. So, of course, none of us put it on. Um, yeah, that that was. I mean, well, what I'm saying is, Kevin, Kevin was, uh, Kevin had a girlfriend. Her name was Alcohol, and that 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 was um <laughs> just, just just really, you know, leading everything he did. You know, that was that was his girl. We we was just we was just like something to do. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. We wasn't really, we wasn't a priority. We wasn't really, um, we wasn't really, we, we wasn't really um, on the list. We wasn't, a, we wasn't a priority. So it was just, okay, do this, do that, do this. Like, and, and if you really look at it, what he, what he had, the crew he had up there, we could have all been world champions mm. if, if we'd have been handled a little differently. You know, I still, I don't like the way they handled Jeremy career. Yeah. I don't like the way they did it. You know, like, I mean, you just jump it out there like I wouldn't be putting um Jeremy in with 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 um prospect after prospect after prospect. I mean, of course, you know you got a you know you got a a, a young talented fighter who won everything in the amateurs. Um, if you go tell him uh, he's not gonna turn down a fight, but it's up to you guys, to, um Bill Caton, you know to 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 match him accordingly, match mm -hmm. him right. If, if Jeremy was my fighter back then, he would be, he would have been he would went right into a world title fight undefeated with all knockouts mm -hmm. or damn near more all knockouts. That man makes 80, 85 percent knockout ratio. But when you put him in there with guys and Styles, Styles make fights. Period. Yeah. To this day, and they always will. You can't just go in there thinking you're gonna knock everything out and everything gonna go your way. I'm gonna match my fighter. The, the way where I know him, put him in there with guys that I know he's going to knock out, highlight real knockout, and we're going to get the credit we need. I'm not going to put him in there with, with boxers that run around. I'm not going to put him in there with guys that can, can outpoint him. I'm going to put him in there with people that I know he's going to knock out and win. We're going to build a situation like pretty much what they did with Tyson. So... But I mean, you know, they, people do things the way they do it. I don't know why they do it, but it's easy to, you know, you know, after boxing is easy, you know. Yeah. Okay, well, I would do it this way, or I would do it that way. Seems like they had one strategy for everybody. 
do it like they did Mike. Didn't work. Didn't work. It did, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I mean, like somebody like, like, like you was getting highlight right, real knockouts early, you know. But um, I just think Bill Caton and 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 Steve Lott, they just, I just think they, they dropped the ball with your career. I think they, they, they. They they put they, anybody they put in front of you going to accept, you know you going to say okay, and that's the problem with boss. They look at it like, like okay, well my ego on the line. Nah, this is a business. This your life. This your life. <clears throat> so you know, um, that's not the way I, I move fighters. I would never do it that way. So who, uh, what fighter of today would it? Would you, well, Hassan Rock at 26 would fight some guy today that's fighting that you would love to fight today? Yeah. Well, you're 26 though, you're not 40, blah blah. What we are, we're for 26. We're gonna, and, and there's this guy I want to fight him because I feel like mm, it'd be so great, it'd be so easy. Yeah. Be so this. Who would you want to fight of today? Yeah, your prime. you mean like champions? Yeah, well, a- any heavyweight of <laughs> the do from the neighborhood, whatever. I don't care. No man, <laughs> listen to him. <laughs> truck, what's um, up with truck. <clears throat> you say truck? Yeah, what's up with your man truck? What truck, Lorenzo Simpson? I don't know. You used to talk to some dude named Truck on the phone for hours. I don't know who he was, but his name was Truck. Oh, you know it's a little, it's a little middleweight, a little junior middleweight named Lorenzo Simpson. That's my son's. That's my son's. Um, well, that's that's Crystal nephew. That's who it was. You used to talk to him for so, oh, truck, truck. No, this. no, he a kid. He a kid. No, oh, he I used kid. to talk to some dude. Truck the been, yeah, that's that truck, truck, truck. I mean, you know, he, the streets got him bad. I mean, uh, he had paralyzed. Oh, dope thing. Um, oh, so. Well, yeah. I just brought the. But my 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 city my city was my city was rough on on guys. They don't they, they weren't strong enough to really walk away from. You know the, the the morphine and the heroin, and it just it won. Yeah, and it's gonna always win. Well, I'm I'm sorry I brought the show to a screeching halt. Let's go back to the question: Who would you want to fight, um, in your prime, a, a heavyweight today? I mean, it went. I, I would have said Deontay Wilder, but since he's not the champ no more, it had to be um, Anthony Joshua. Over I mean, four. probably I wouldn't want to fight Tyson Fury because, you know, like, I've like, seen Tyson switch up and go southpaw. I don't think I could ever find a um, spawn partner that could really get me ready for him. Mm-hmm. So it would probably be Deontay or Anthony or both. Uh, I you mean, do good with tall fighters? With what? You, you, do, you do good against really tall guys like that? I don't, but I'm just saying, like, if you're really talking about – um. If you're really talking about fighting somebody, nobody else matters. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, you give me, I, you're not really giving me a bunch of. Uh, 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 <coughs> it's not like it's four, five, ten heavyweight champions. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would I want to fight a, a, a contender? Like, yeah. I'm always, I always want to fight the, the man, whoever it is. Yeah. Like, it's well, a no-brainer to me. Like, it, it would have to be the champ. Why would I want to fight a guy like a contender? That, oh, he undefeated. So what? What does that mean? I can get my grandmother undefeated. <laughs> you're uh, you're oh, there. You go. Um, damn. So yeah, it had to be. It, no, I hate fighting tall guys, and that's why I think this Bridger weight. I actually like it. This what? You Which know, what? Bridger weight. This new Bridger weight they're coming out with. I heard weight. about that, but can you break it down? I don't really know what it is. It's a it's a new it's a new division the WBC created that's that's between two hundred and two twenty. No, between one ninety and two twenty. So it's kinda like heavyweight so as opposed to super- it's, a, it's 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 almost like it would be like it would be like heavyweight and, and super heavyweight, but yeah. but 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 the bridge of weight is from one it's still cruiserweight, but cruiserweight stops at one ninety. And then from 191 to 220 is Bridger weight. So, so are you saying Bridger? Bridger, what is Bridger. Bridger. B- B- Bridger, like a bridge, B-R, like Bridger. Bridger. So is, Bridger that, weight. is that just the WBC or all the organizations adopted? I'm, I'm sure all of them won't do it. 
I'm sure all I'm going to do it, but somebody always got to be the pioneer. Somebody uh-huh. always got to start things off. Uh, so, so um, when they um when they come out with this, and they get um they get a uh, champion, and, and and it's really it's really if if they had bridge away when I was fighting, I probably would have campaigned that because Me too. I don't want to go up against these guys, Lennox Lewis, and and the Klitschko's and all that kind of. I mean, that's just so they 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 use their height to their advantage where it's not really a fight. The only way I would want to fight one of them guys, really, is they had like 10 foot rings. And that's what they should have, like where people can't run around and, and use the entire ring. Mm. Yeah, if they had 10 foot rings where you. Oh, bro. Gone. Back. Wait a minute. All right, what'd you say? Yeah, my phone keep ringing. Um, what'd you say now? Oh, I was going to ask. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you a, a question, and this one, I, I want you to be honest if you can. Was there a fighter that you were straight up scared, scared to get in there with? Like you were scared really to fight, not really? scared to fight, but a fighter that no, that you fought, and that as before the fight, you know, it made you the most just scared, just to be straight up for real. You talking to a guy who been shot five times, a truck flipped over on his face. Then been in all types of like wars. I understand. So I don't. I mean, when you talk about just one man, I'm never gonna be scared to this day. Never gonna be scared to fight a man. Period. Okay. And if I ran into any of these champions on the street, I don't think they could beat me. On the street, I think they could either. Tell you the truth, I think. I think. I think. I think yeah. that. I think that there's a the level of fighters that are out there now. Um, they're not like the old school guys like us, man. We we got so much more education in the ring than them. You know, they fight. You know, five, six, ten. They got twenty five fights, and now they they they're trying to world title. And you know, they t- they're getting world title fights for ten ten fights, they, they, three four fights. They be ready. They be ready to fight for titles. That's that. That's why when when they tried to put Lomachenko pound for pound king. Having seven fights, that shit just infuriated me. I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't. You got to prove yourself, don't uh, no? Yes, I think he proved himself. What? But seven fights. Fight. I think he proved himself. Shit, the best in the world at t- in ten fights. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I think he proved himself. I mean, when you put him in there with a guy like well, well Gary Russell Jr. and he beat him, I mean, that's. What more, you, what more you got? He lost the fight. He, at that time, he lost the fight because the guy did not make weight, so he really, you know, didn't 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 lose the fight on fair terms. And he came back, and if it was another round or two, I think he wins that fight. Um, and then he he beat everybody. I mean, I'm not the man. Whole entire career, amateur and pro, was impeccable. Even though he lost to to, to Lopez mm-hmm. just now, that was the. The only legitimate loss I give him. I don't know. To me, when you look at best pound for pound, to me it ha- it has to incorporate what they've done and their body of work. So you look. Well, who's your pound for pound number one? Canelo. Easy. No, absolutely not. He's beating everybody except. For How's him. that easy? How's that easy? I I no no I'm saying to me easy because he has beaten so many superstars. So many superstars. He lost to one guy when uh, Floyd, who was one of the best ever when he was young. To me, okay. like, you know what I mean? Like, Loma. Can I poke holes in your pound for pound? Poke it. Okay. For one, <clears throat> he, he'd have been, he'd have been uh, accused of the drugs, being on drugs. He tested positive for the drugs. Okay. Blamed it on some meat. That's number one. Number two, three, and four. Um, <clears throat> He got suspect wins against Austin Trout, Lar, and Triple G the first time. Like you can't, you you can't, you can't put him number one over a guy like Terrence Crawford when Terrence Crawford then been undisputed in the weight class, undisputed and three divisions, won world titles. How can how can you put him like ahead of Terrence Crawford? My response to that would be. Yeah, he did have suspect wins. He was going up in weight. He came back and he beat Triple G in that rematch, no question, right? I, I said the first fight. Right, right, I but I'm saying, right, but I'm saying he came back. It wasn't his weight class. He grew into it. Um, Terrence Crawford is 
a great fighter. I'm not like he's dope. He could fight, but he hasn't beaten enough people. His resume is nowhere near what Canelo's is in Canelo. He never he never tested positive for dope. Dope. You're right. I didn't know about that. Um, I forgot okay. it. Yeah, that's you know about it. You know about it. And anytime somebody do any doping, they automatically can't be pound for pound in my book. No, you're right. Yeah, in fact, in fact, to me, when you do doping in this sport, you shouldn't be able to get in the Hall of Fame. You shouldn't be able to be recognized as world champion. Mm -hmm. Anything you did, they should do them like they do Barry Bonds mm -hmm. and, and putting putting them in the Hall of Fame. You can't, and, it, and in fact, it's worse in boxing because you can actually kill somebody. You got people's lives that you endangering. That's so. Canelo, because of the dope and because of the suspect wins, I mean, like you, it's clear to me that they, Canelo is icon. He's so much of an icon that somebody gave him the fight when he fought Floyd. What the hell is that? That's crazy. One just gave him the fight. Come on now. Stop it. Cut it out. So your number one pound for pound now is who? Crawford? Definitely Crawford. I mean, and, and and to me, and I, I actually don't think Crawford is the best in this weight class. I actually think Earl Spence can beat yeah. Crawford. I was about to but say, but just on the body, but Go just ahead. I can't put Earl ahead of Crawford because of the body of work. He a three division champion, and he was undisputed. Cleaned out the one forty, cleaned mm -hmm. it out, hit all the belts. So I mean, based on and with no losses, none. Y'all yeah. can say, well, you got one loss to the greatest uh, at the time or whatever, but he still has a loss. He still has like Charles Crawford has no losses. And 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 and, yeah. and and um and no suspect wins. That's true. I mean, I would put Spence ahead of him because after Spence's most recent performance, um, because to me it's all about the resume, who you fought. You know, you could be 50 and 0 and, and fought nobody. Nobody of any kind of recognition. It doesn't matter. You can't be fifty and zero. You can't be fifty and zero, and and for nobody and be undisputed. Right. Once you undisputed something, Canelo never was. Right. Once you undisputed, you fought somebody. You fought a few somebody's. Right. And That's then he three 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 division weight champion, and, <clears throat> and you gonna say he never fought nobody? To me, it's just much more nah. impressive watching Canelo beat Kovalev. I mean, okay, forget about the drugs. If he took drugs, but. That's true. But without the drugs, going up and weight, doing all that shit is impressive. But yeah, if you took drugs, then you can't. It's not really that, it's not really that impressive to me. You know why? Mm. Because I think he was he was just that big all the time. Just mm. just killing himself to get down in weight. You know, that's why he was creating all these different weight classes. I mean, y'all let this boy do whatever he wanted to do. You treat him like a spoiled baby. Oh, all these different oh catch weight. Canelo is primarily responsible for all that catch weight bull crap. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. been doing it. He was doing it. Well, I don't, I mean, I don't think boxing should have weigh-ins the day before. It should be the day of. And that would knock all that shit out. The yeah, problem with that is if 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 you're doing it the day of and somebody mm -hmm. don't make weight, you got no time to really salvage the yeah, show. You got no show. You got no show either. Mm -hmm. You got no main event. Well, they right. Can... So if you if you if you got a guy that, that can't make the weight with 24 hours, you can make a lot happen. Yeah. yeah, but four, yeah. five, six hours. Then you bring somebody in. Then they don't make weight. Then what? You just lost a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the reason you know, why they would never do that is because television be involved. When you got television involved, and and, and you got everybody looking forward to this fight and paying for this fight, mm -hmm. and and you can't do it. What do you say? Oh, we we'll get our money back. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't do that. It, it it will never be that. It will never be same day weigh ins again. Because there's too much money involved. I think I think we just bored the shit out of Jeremy. Jeremy doesn't really follow the current fight much. So I think he's yeah. sleeping over there. I was, I was, but what happened was I got to woke up because we started talking about money. Money is money. Not boxing. What was that? What? Yeah, I don't know. I said you started talking about changes everything. You froze, Rock. Money. Once you start talking about money, once you start talking about money, changes everything. Yeah, that changes that changes everything. Yeah. yeah, that's why they would never do the same thing. <clears throat> mm. Never, yeah, makes sense. Uh, shit, yeah, yeah, they they gotta get some. So, question. Well, um, 
I'm a car guy. What kind of car are you driving these days? Dave. Froze. Froze. Hey, Rose. What day is it? Oh, that's that's a slick shit. Uh, what did he say? What day it is. He has a different car for every day. Yeah, what day is <laughs> it? We're coming on Monday. I mean, basically, I just um, I just be in my um, my uh, my 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 uh, SUV, the most. That's what I really drive. But we, I do got like a BMW and a Bentley, so I, I switch them up. Well, I think I think this year, actually this year, um, in twenty twenty one, I'm I'm gonna be starting this. We we start this television show, so I'm gonna probably upgrade to a fancy. What so. television show? I got a television show that, um, like, it's gonna be on what we do, my businesses and stuff like that. And uh, you ever see the show The Profit? No. Yes. Well, I'm gonna be doing something like that, but it's gonna be like in urban communities, helping them, um, you know, bring value and 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 capital to their businesses, take a part and help, you know, bring it up, get it right. And it's gonna be in like I'm gonna start in Baltimore, but I got some 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 businesses that I'm helping. Um, in Houston and, and all around, it's gonna be called Urban Champions. I'm, I'm I'm going around to the urban communities and and to help them get their businesses where they need to be. That's great. Yeah. Man. That's dope. You, you never seen the Prophet? That's a great show, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what we're gonna be. That's it's pretty much like I'm be doing what Marcus Lamonis does, but um, you know, Marcus would never go in where where I'm going. Mm. Right. Um, well, Marcus we, won't do that. So the people, the people, the people that, the people that I'm, I'm gonna be helping. He would never go in and help. What um, on a different topic, what do you think about the current like Tyson versus Jones and kind of like, and would you ever get involved in fighting now? Somebody you know your age. Um, I actually like it. Uh, I actually I didn't really enjoy the fight. It was whack. That much I thought Roy made the fight a little dull, mm -hmm. but um, I actually <clears> like <throat> it. And would I would I get back in there? Yeah, um, a hundred percent. Damn. Yeah. Did it? Did it? You know, you know, uh, we interviewed Chris Bird last week. Yep. Chris is gonna fight at sixty again. <laughs> Did I say that? I saw. I saw that. I saw yeah. that. What yeah. do you think about that? I think he, he I think it's suicide. <laughs> really? Yeah, I think it's suicide. Um, and I and 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 I'm gonna give you a couple examples while you you know to, to, to give y'all my train of thought. Um Roy Jones, you know, when he went up to heavyweight, when he came back down, it was he was never the same because when you when you go up and wait like that. And, and Roy was never a fat guy, so what'd he lose? Muscle? Right. Muscle. So, and, and Chris Byrne attempted this already. He attempted to come down to Cruiserweight, and I think he got stopped. He said... At his, Cruiserweight. His excuse for that, we talked to him about it, was that he lost weight very, very poorly. He said he was, like, eating too, but throwing up, and just really didn't lose. That was his reason for getting stopped. Okay, well, I mean, that... I, he gonna have to show me I'm from Missouri, so he gonna have to show me that. So when you come down to to, to 160 from 200 something pounds, you're going to lose a lot of muscle. Mm. You're going to lose muscle. So and then you're gonna have to do a lot of like like running or cardio. And and when you lose when you do that, cardio makes you lose muscle. And it makes you lose fat also, but it makes you lose muscle. And when you lose muscle like that, and muscle helps you to be able to 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 absorb shots also. So um, mm. when you lose, I think you're losing your punch resistance too. So I mean, I just don't see it working. But I mean, I would love for Chris to be able to um come down and because I definitely think he would be, uh, especially a '92 version of when he was in the amateurs, like that Chris Bird. If if that could come back. He'd be every middleweight out here right now, every one of them. But um, I just, I, I'm just skeptical that he can just come back and be strong, and 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 quick, and be able to take the um, 
the punches that these guys are giving. So if 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 he got some new miracle way to lose weight and keep your muscle, dude, I just, yeah. if you go to his Instagram, <clears throat> dude, he's he's at sixty now. Yeah, I seen, I saw. Him. Yeah, so you see, he's like ripped up, you know, like. But yes, I I know what you're saying, man. Like you know, to lose to lose weight from two ten to, to sixty, you're losing a lot of muscle with that as well. Right. There's no uh, way you're not gonna lose. It. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way you're not gonna lose. And a fighter, a muscle, a fighter like that that relies so much on his on his reflex, you know, and his his, his that's the first thing that goes with age. So it, it'll be rough. Well, is it any sparring on the Instagram? Is he showing you anything? Nah. Yeah. He's showing you like hitting the bag. I mean, I'm saying that if you wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna, if you want to um get yourself in the in the mix uh, nowadays, social media, get some, get in there with somebody or get in there with a middleweight. Pop up in a camp, you know, like a little triple G or this person, that person. Go in there and school them. I guarantee you that'll do it. That'll go viral. Mm. Yeah. You want sure smoke, if you want smoke nowadays, you'll need commercials. You all you need is social media. Mm -hmm. Go make a video, beating up some people at middleweight, showing them how sharp you are. You know, if you want to do that, you can easily get the smoke, easily because the public will demand it. No, you're you're 100 correct. You're 100. So if if uh, if you were to fight again, who would you fight? I know you said I, mean, I know that. Like, how I would love you talking about like like I wouldn't I wouldn't fight none of these guys. I, I want to fight Evander. That's not bad. You're already dead. That's who I want to fight. If you asking me who I want to fight, I would I would I would want to fight Evander. Why? I mean, because like it's certain people that got wins over me on, on, on my record, but they don't have wins over me in, in, in my book. Okay. The way I look at things. You know, yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. So so now. The record is the record, but the way I live, the way the, who I am, I don't accept that. So, David Tua got a a, a, a a win over me. I don't accept that. He didn't beat me. I beat him. I beat the crap out of him twice actually, and they never gave me a win. They gave me a draw, and they let him. They let him hit me at the belt. They didn't give me one minute to even recoup. And then I was making a miss, and they stopped the fight. So I mean, I don't. That that's not that's not a win to me. Who else? That's who a else? gift. What other are those that aren't wins in your book? Which other ones? Evander Holyfield. Hmm. Well, that was, I mean, that was that, so that was that because your head, was that a headbutt? Yeah. That was a headbutt, right? Yeah, it was a headbutt. <laughs> Damn. And um, did that, what was that? That was just fluid collecting? Yeah, it was a hematoma, but it was, it was a bunch of fluid in there. It was, it was the, the good thing about it is like, my cut man was my little brother, who's actually an orthopedic surgeon. So oh. he um he uh had me okay, but there's nothing he could do about it. But instead of me thinking it's blood, it's this, it's that, it's that, he let me know that it's really it's okay, it's mm -hmm. okay. You gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. It's nothing too dangerous. We are gonna be all right. It's How calm long down. did it go down? Man, about a month. Really. They couldn't. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't go. My little, I went home. My daughter was scared to death of me. <laughs> <laughs> I could be scared too, and I made it. Why couldn't they drain it? <clears throat> I, I, I mean, I guess they could have, but they said it comes down on its own. So why would you go and get get it drained? So was Holofield? Did Holofield have? What, what about him besides being smart? Did Did he have power? That was he fast or? No, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. When I say he's smart, I'm just basically just saying he uses his head very well. That's like a backhanded compliment. Yeah, he's dirty. I'm just saying he's smart because he uses his head. Mm. That's it. Not he's smart and tough. Everybody know he, he, he's a smart fighter. Everybody know that. Anybody who say Evander Holyfield is not a smart fighter, they just hate him, period. I mean, you can't. In fact, Evander Holyfield probably one of the best fighters ever, ever. I mean, this guy was undisputed at Cruiserweight. Undisputed at heavyweight, the only four-time heavyweight champion. I mean, his laws are his laws. You can't take them away. Mm, and yeah. he's really a small guy. He fought at light heavyweight in the amateurs. So, yeah. And he still didn't want to go medal in. 
but yeah. he got cheated out of a gold medal. True. So, I mean, you know, this this guy, he the real deal. The real deal is a appropriate name for him. Mm. But I just feel like, you know, I, I was cheated in that fight. Because why? Because they stopped it and the judges not only because they stopped it, but because when he when 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 when, when he headbutts you, right? Now, <clears throat> if anybody ever been headbutt, right? It takes you a minute to get your 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 your, your burns back about you if you get hit by the heart. Mm -hmm. So Hurts now, you. while I'm recouping from these headbutts, now he's throwing all these punches that they might they might actually allow him to win that round. Mm. So when when he would land the headbutts, he would come in with his head down, right, and then get in the clinch and kind of go up with it. I'm saying all you got to do is look at that fight, and they got. I can send you some, some like the, the moments he did when he had by me, and then we come out of the head by the, the it start growing immediately, mm. like it's obvious. Now, the fight should have been stopped right there, and then it would have been a no no contest. Mm. But you allow this guy to keep hitting me, and and it's just you know boxing. Boxing is really you. Know, I love boxing, but I hate boxing also, because you know some somebody like Canelo can can get anything they want, anything they want. What you do know, you mean? they pretty much call the shot. Oh, and then boxing you got guys thinking, dirty business, bro. Thinking he pound for pound. <laughs> it is dirty business. Boxing is a dirty, nasty. Don't want to see it, fucking. Garbage ass business. I'm the I, and I say business, not a sport. Football sport, baseball sport, basketball sport, boxing is a business, and that's how they run it. And the boxers, the fighters themselves, are the least important motherfucker on the track. It's all about the managers, man. Unless you are Oscar De La Hoya, or Canelo Alvarez, or Floyd Mayweather. Yes, sir, sir. If, 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 else give a shit. if you. If you reach superstardom like that, if you can get that mainstream appeal, if you can if you can cross over to the mainstream, which very few boxers do, if you can get to that point, you good. You can call all the shots. But ninety nine all the shots. You can do what you 99. want. Ninety nine point nine percent of us never make it right there. Half of yeah, of course not. So there is those people, but it's this. Not us, not me and you. We had big careers in the sport. But, but 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 you know what? You know what? You know what's funny, Jeremy? What's up? You know what's funny? If you or I had our careers and we would live in England, we'd be super superstars. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, he does it differently. Derek Chisor, Derek Chisor, man, they they make so much money. They sells out our crowd. They got sold out of rent. I mean, Dillian White, all these guys. These guys ain't ain't nothing special, and and they 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 get they get they got so much support. The problem with with America is we got we spoil. We got so many other different sports that okay, boxing is if we want to watch it out, we, we'll check out what we want to check out. But over there, they don't have as much as much sport. They probably got some rugby, some soccer, and 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 boxing. Boxing is their main attraction over there. They love those guys. They love them. They support them. We don't get the support. And then, Jeremy, it, it goes even further to, for me and you because as black men, we don't support black don't support black. No. They don't support a, black. That's, that's true. 100% true. If you, get a, if you get a white heavyweight, a American born white heavyweight, that's not the head of career you had, the head of career I had, he'd be, oh my God. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, no, you're he'd be untouchable. What do you mean by black don't support black? You mean that the black fans don't support the black athletes, the fighters? A hundred percent. That's what I mean. Okay. That's what I said. Black don't support black. Hmm. You yeah, ever go to a fight? You ever go to a fight? You ever go to a fight? Like guys got to come up. Guys got to come up. Don't wait till we become a world champion. Like I give you an example, my little my, my little homie from my from my town, um, Tank Davis. Oh, he 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 a world champion now. So now he now everybody want to see him. What about 
him coming up? What about when yeah. he was fighting four rounders and six rounders? Nobody was coming to see him. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean we need that's why I don't that's why there's no money in the sport because when 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 guys got it when guys coming up, okay, nobody coming to see them. That's why the promoters is hard. It's well, hard. And, and and then you got guys like I think Tank is fighting uh uh Ryan, Ryan Garcia next. You got guys like Ryan Garcia who are building themselves through social media. Right? That's and when he fights, and when he fights, it's gonna be jam-packed and he's gonna get money regardless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also he's a Mexican fighter. The Mexican people support them their, their people. They love boxing. They yeah, love I think Ryan Garcia is not appealing so much to Mexicans. He's he's doing the whole millennial YouTube and fucking whatever. Yeah, the girls love him. The girls love him. Um, you know, so how do you see that fight so going? He, um, with, with Tank? Yeah. Ah, not sure. You know, Tank from Baltimore, that's my little man. Actually, yeah. um, I'm gonna tell you a two quick story right quick. Mm -hmm. I was my one of my one of my one of my homies. He was um, it was Tank big homie, and uh, he came to me to turn Tank pro. Mm. So it was up to me. I turned it down. Why? Because Tank was eighteen, and I I was just not a big fan of you know getting in there with them grown men. Uh, at eighteen, I wanted him to to, to win a, a national title or two on the senior level first, and show that you can be in there with the men. Because he was killing the juniors, and 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 and, and I just don't want to. I don't want to be responsible for nobody getting hurt to try to make a couple out. So I wanted him to to um, possibly either, you know, probably try for the Olympics or or, or prove himself on a senior level. Mm. So you know, um, but he wanted to turn pro, so he turned pro at eighteen. I wasn't. A fan, I'm not a fan of turning pro at eighteen. That's just not yeah, for me. Not. That's not like. Well, now it's a little different because it's just everybody doing it. But at that time, I didn't. I wasn't a fan of. It. I, I I thought that um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it would be bro, dangerous. You look. You need. To, I I feel. I feel. I feel like you need to grow a little bit. Eighteen is just too young. You start dealing with a bunch of adult situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but grown men. I mean, I'm saying you could be better than a grown man, but he could be just that much stronger. And I just don't think at eighteen you have your full grown man strength. And I wasn't going to be responsible for him getting in there with somebody that's just stronger than him. May not be better than him, but just stronger than him and catch him with the, the wrong shot and the career is nobody would never look at him the same. Mm. You know, also, and boxing you know, is the only sport where if you take a loss, you, you're a bum. You're a bum. Yeah, if you get yeah. knocked out, you're a bum. You're a bum. Yeah. Come yeah, on, now. Yeah. How, how? Like, I would never... Like, for me, I respect anybody getting in that ring. You got you to have... I respect guys who got knocked out and came back and, 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 and fought more than I respect undefeated fighters. Yeah. Because well, I, I'm not sure that the undefeated fighter could, could come back from something like that. Yeah. Oh, I, I agree with you, man. I definitely agree. You never know what, what's inside that energy the guy's got. Man. And it's I think it's a sport that you get better as you get older and get more mature because – Right? Tell me, tell me if you agree with me. Boxing is ninety percent mental. You agree? Yep. Yeah, I agree. It's probably, yeah, probably definitely. It's def I mean, like, like I used to tell, um, I used to tell my little brother, right? Um, he had a trainer, and then I started training him. Um, so I said, "Listen, man, I'm gonna tell you right now. You never have a bad day. Once you step in that ring, you always get seventy percent. That's the bottom line you can get. I don't care what happens." You get a 70%. You can't go below 70% by just stepping in the ring because it takes so much heart and courage to step in the ring. And then you got guys that's notorious. They call them like meat wagon guys. Guys' mm -hmm. opponents is brought in there to lose, to get knocked out. And they keep getting in that ring, mm -hmm. you know. And they keep getting in that ring. They, that, that's, that, I don't know what kind of intestinal fortitude you must possess to do that. Yeah. Like, it's that's just, insane oh, to me. Yeah. That's insane to me. But they got to have heart to do that. Then you got guys like, a guy like um Jeremy Guy, both of us for Mo Wilson, Marion Wilson. This yeah. guy, I mean, he never tries to win. 
but he just tries to survive. And he does survive. Mm -hmm. He's tough. You know, but, I mean, what, what kind of heart you got to have to get in there with? Like, if you look at this guy's resume, he didn't fought everybody. Everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, like, you know, it's the championship mentality in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so, so, I mean, I got, I got so much respect for boxers. Like, uh, I, I think. Oh, Rose. Everybody froze. You know, that's what I just look at it like. I don't really care what nobody. I got my own uh, story. It's this is my history is history, his story, my story. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell it the way I want to tell it. And, and, and it don't matter what the records say. It don't matter what your opinion is. It don't matter what her opinion is. It matters what, what I think about me. And when I'm dead and gone, you grandkids to say, you know what? My peoples did this. He did that. He did this. He did that. And if I'm not mistaken, I think he used to box. <laughs> That's awesome. I love the way you put that. Great. Uh, knowledge. But yeah, she definitely, definitely, definitely. So I'm, uh, let's close the show. I think it's been a great show, man. Yeah, this was dope. We just Mr. Caskill reunion. Mr. Caskill reunion. Woo. Word no, up. At, what is going on with Kevin? Anything? What Kevin? Kevin Rooney. You talk? I know his son works for the zone. For who? The zone. Um, um, like uh matchroom, the zone, the, the um me and matchroom. I, I just the talked network. To yeah, I, I think he works. Yeah, he the works phone. for I emailed his son. Um, and he's down to go on the podcast. And I, I thought about trying to get Kevin on it, but I don't know. He's a little bitter. You know what I mean? Like, bitter about what? He's like, last time I talked to him, I remember asking him, this was maybe 15 years ago. I was like, yo, have you talked to Hasim or Jeremy? And he was just like, ah, I don't fuck the, those guys fucked me over. I don't, why would I talk to him? Like, he feels like any fighter who well, left, fucked him over. How, 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 how did I fuck him over? Any fighter who left him. He feels like fucked him over, because you're not still training with him. That's all. You didn't. Both of you. He said the same thing for both of you. And I mean, I just asked in general. Has he spoken? Well, well, well. I don't know what him and Jeremy. I'm not even getting into that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> like, I was an amateur fighter trying to learn how to fight. That's it. Uh -huh. That's all I was doing. How did I fuck him over? Maybe, maybe it was just Jeremy was talking about. This was a while ago. But I, yeah, yeah, I think so. But, but he, that was money. It was no money involved with me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Kevin, you had no, you had, you had no fights with Kevin. I yeah. had, I had two fights with Kevin. Amateur fights. And I remember <laughs> you guys got into some like he, you, you got annoyed at him or something, or he some shit. And on and on the car ride back, you just were ignoring him, and he was. I don't know. I remember some story like that. Like after the fight, you guys got into something. I don't really remember what it was though. I'm saying because like I, I I come to the realization that why you why you got me I'm up here trying to get training. Like he should have had me up running five o'clock in the morning doing this, doing that, weight training, doing this, doing it. Like I got none of that. None of that. Mm -hmm. I actually feel like I actually feel like my time in Casco was almost a, a, a detriment, a deterrent. Like I didn't get no I I didn't get any better being there. Yeah, like it was a waste of fucking time. Yeah, you know I agree. I like once I learned Kevin's shit, I was like, I'm ready to go. Like you got nothing else to teach me. I tell Jeremy to this day. Hey, Jer Jeremy taught me how to fight. He taught me how to throw punches. He Kevin wasn't really involved. Jer Jeremy taught me everything that I knew. He, he didn't hold the pads. He oh. didn't hold the pads. Like what did he do? Get on the wheelie? Get the fuck out of here! What the hell is that? <laughs> Man, that's, was, some shit, that's some shit that Cuss was doing anyway. That was Cuss' voice. Right. Do you remember the girl, Nadia? Nadia. What about her? I don't know. Just what the fuck was she? What was her role? I don't even remember her role there. I don't even know. She was the model. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let me explain. Let's explain this Nadia chick to, to the people listening. Nadia, oh, hey, all you, you got to do is tell them how they ever seen a skeleton. Ah. Uh. She was how old do you think she was? Skeleton with blonde hair. That's it. That's not it. 
How old do you think she was then? Because she looked probably about, about seventy. She, nah, but she wasn't. But she looked it. How old do you think she? That's was? That's what I'm saying. She's probably forty. Let's say forty. Forty ish. She was. I feel kind of bad because she was actually kind of nice. She was a little weird, but she was nice. You know what? You know what? You know what would be so ironic? Hmm. If her ass is listening to this podcast right now, I didn't put it out yet. So. Oh well, when she listened to this shit. She gonna be like, oh my god, that's how they thought about me. Nah, she, uh, I, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. She, she's, not, I've never had a bad word to say about her. I just thought she looked a little weird. I love that woman. I know she looked a lot of weird. Yeah, yeah, she was. You made love to that woman. That's terrible. <laughs> you said what? Marco said he made love to that. Yo, woman. do you remember Hasim? There was this dude in the gym, and he ended up hitting it. But he wouldn't. He didn't tell us. And I remember we were all talking. And you got him to admit it. You tried to play it off like you wouldn't fuck with him. You're like, yo, tell me the truth. You hit it, right? It's cool. Don't worry about tell it. Tell him, Muhammad. I don't know who it was, but the second he admitted it, the whole, all of us erupted like, oh shit, you hit that. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, that's crazy. You remember that? I, I, I yeah, I, I wouldn't hit that with a bat. <laughs> <laughs> ah. But you skillfully made him admit it, thought it was sick, made him think it was safe to admit it, and then he got Hey, it. Y'all, y'all need to get Muta on the show. I don't think he, I don't know if that would even, could he talk still? He had some issues back then. <laughs> oh, boy. I you think, I think he, I mean, if you get through the mumbling, you can get it. I think he lives in Florida somewhere. How would you know that? Yeah, okay. I can get his number. I think I got his number for y'all. I can get his number. Yo, shoot that. <clears throat> that would be. That would be. It. We're gonna. Uh, we're gonna put a rink, Winky on next week. Yeah. Winky, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, my we, man. Yeah, that's dude, my man. I know him forever. Winky. Yeah. Who else we got? Montel Griffin. So we got, but Montel Griffin's coming up next too. Yeah, yeah Montel, my man. Too. Y'all got all my boys on there. They all my boys. Oh, that's Jim, man. I know you say you 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 should hate Montel though, Jeremy. Yeah, I used to. But, uh, <laughs> We're gonna get into that. that yeah, was... I want to know that. Like, how? Like, like how? How does that feel, Jeremy? I mean, let, let me play. Let me switch places with Jeremy right quick. Go for it. That's just me and you, Marco. All right. Now, how when you the the man and 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 from like eighty nine, ninety, ninety one, ninety two, right? And mm. you beating everybody, beating all the top guys, beating the guys who. I actually think you didn't you beat the guy who won as you went in gold medal? Yes. Yeah, right. So I'm saying you beat everybody, and then this little motherfucker midget come out of the grass, <laughs> just just out of nowhere and just come and and and, and upset you in the trials. Like yeah, how? Me, like listen, how did so that look, make you feel? Terrible because this is what happened. And it had got it got everything to do it with politics. Like I so I beat Montel in the tournament, and <clears throat> so I was supposed to fight a guy named Terry McGroom, rest in peace. Um, and Terry McGroom was the most was dedicated. The guy I needed to fight him twice. I fight him twice or one more time, then I go to the Olympics. Montel, I beat Montel. Like let's say we had a four day tournament. I beat Montel on day two, and then the day four, <clears throat> whatever. So I, I win the tournament. Montel. Tells the amateur boxing commission, I'm gonna. I'm. This is what the story came to me. It could be different when we talk to Montel. That I'm gonna sue you if you don't make me the most noteworthy opponent. And, and so they say, okay, then you need to fight uh, Terry McGroom, right? So then Montel fought my, Terry McGroom Saturday, and then on, then on Sunday he fought me and he beat him. And on Sunday he had to fight me again twice. The whole tournament. I was the only, like, say, you had all the champions in the red corner, all the challengers in the blue corner. I was the only one in the red corner to lose. Only one. Great. But 11 and 0. And then I had to fight him again. The worst part about it, like, if you watch, Hassim, if you watch the actual, like, video footage, the way they even announced the winner is so heartbreaking as a, they go, like, and. Going to the Olympics is it is just fucked up. Must have been crushing. I couldn't imagine. No, I, I that day Montel did beat me, right? So, but on the other side of that is 
I was I was like I was looking just to knock him out. I didn't want to I didn't want to go to the thing. And he's slick and he's crafty and he did all that. So you know, and then I wasn't gonna win. I think the score was like three to eight or ten or some shit. Where I was like, it's fucking ridiculous. That was no slouch though, man. No, he can. Fight. I spoiled with Montel. I, I spoiled with Montel. Did it's crazy. You know, that's my man. But but we was in Vegas. We sparred together. No, he's a good dude. Hey, don't get me wrong, but I just like they then because I I was the team captain, the Olympic team captain that year, and I was a big mouth and talking shit and blah blah blah, and didn't follow the rules like it was. So they, you know, they thought that was a better mix. And then yeah, they wanted beat- somebody more, more, more status quo, more fit the build and think they can do yeah. things more politically correct. Exactly. So. Did he beat me the second time? Yes. Did he beat me the first day? No. But did he beat me to win the tournament? Yes. But if they give you the they give you the win on the first day, he get no exactly. Yeah. So last question, Austin, did you is there anybody else that you ever sparred that you didn't fight, but you sparred that turned ended up, you know, somebody of notoriety, like a real fucking great heavyweight that you would actually spar, but you never fought that comes to mind. Great heavyweight, I spar, I spar. I, I mean like um um, I used to spar Sam Peter all the time. Okay. Um, I used to stop him every time we spar, every single time. Um, Tommy Brooks came out, came out to Vegas and said, um, "Yeah, I got you. I want you to spar my heavyweight." So I said, "All right." So he he bring Sam Peter, the Nigerian Nightman, in. Um, he said, "I said, well, what you? How many rounds you want us to go?" So he said six. So I said, okay. At, at the end of the fourth round, he could he he quit Look, every time, no matter what. Every time we spar, he because well, well, I'm gonna tell you what Sam' weakness was. He could not take it to the body. Every time I touched him to the body, he wanted to quit. I don't think Jeremy likes talking about Sam Peter. No, you know what? Man, Let's move on. The, I, Jer- Jeremy ain't worried about no Sam Peter. Jeremy, that, whatever it is, it is. Yeah, I know. It is. Um, <laughs> Who else? Uh, let me see. I would, I, but I wish I would have known, motherfucker. I would have called you. <laughs> what do you think about this guy? I would have told you. I would have said, look, all you got to do is jab him. Keep that jab on his body. You keep that stick on his body, he's going to quit. He can take them head shots, though. He uh-huh. can take the head shots. But if you touch that body, man, please. Now you're telling um, me. Let me see. Let me see who I saw. I saw um, oh man! Yeah, but it's, it's all good. Let me see. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, I don't know. I spot so, so many people. Okay. Um, yeah, I spot. I, I, I just, I don't know. I just spot so many people. Right. It's kind of hard to really just go back and Lehman Booster. Um, it's a good dude. Yeah, uh, I'm just trying to think of like champions. Um, yeah, yeah, like because I, I mean, I hate I you obviously I used to hire spawn part. Right. Oh, Chris Iola, I used to, I spawned Chris Iola. Um, and uh, that's another guy dropped him to the body. Mm. Um, um, let's see, um, I don't know, it's a lot of guys, yeah, but um, you know. It's all. It was all just, just, just work, you know. Because it, it, it's sparring, and sparring is different than fighting. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, definitely. So, definitely. Yeah, yeah I'm. Uh, y'all gotta let me know when y'all get. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna watch y'all doing with uh, Montel and uh, Winky Wright. They both my boys, man. He said you, yeah, broke, so. up. you broke up. What you said? So, he said, I said y'all know. got me know when they be on. And, and uh, Martel, both of them are dudes. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah, let me know. Yeah. I'm definitely going to uh, yeah. check it out. Let's do this again. It was a pleasure talking to you, Rock. Are man, you anytime. Whenever y'all in Vegas, man, holla, man. We, we do you something. Remember, remember you said that because I want you to pick me up with your Bentley. I ain't tripping. Yeah. Uh, might be something that Might be something, something big. I told you I might upgrade. So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. You ever come yeah. to Brooklyn? Hey, you still in Long Beach, Jeremy? No, I'm in LA. I live in, in LA now. 
Okay, well, yeah. okay. Because I was in Long Beach. I was in Long Beach. I had a fighter. I was I was training this guy, Michael Hunter. And um, I was in, we, I stayed in Long Beach the entire, like, for about four, six weeks. And you didn't call me. So, you did I ain't had your number. Man, I'm from Long Beach. Dude, just tell, you put the word out on the street. It'll get to me. That's my hood. Okay, I, I duly noted, but I got the number now, so I don't need it. <laughs> you ever so when y'all, when you, hey, you want y'all, hey, hey, Marco, yo, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come to your comedy club when I come out, um, when I come up there, cause you know my wife from New York. So I um, didn't know that. Where's she from? Yeah, you know my, I, you know I, I'm not riding the crystal no more. Right? No, Jeremy just told me now. When did that end? Yeah, that six, five, six, seven years ago. I don't know. Um, where's your wife from? What part of New York? She's from she from the um, Bronx. Okay, yeah. Next time you come down, yeah, come by, man. We'll have a good time. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely gonna reach out, man. And and we all, whenever y'all come to Vegas, let me know, man. We do something real good. All right, cool, man. It's great talk. All right, y'all, take it easy. We'll do this again. All right, all right. Peace.